<laughs> Get it together, Emma. Hi, my name is Louise. And hi, I'm Emma. <laughs> Sorry. Fuck, okay. Hi, my name is Louise. And hi, I'm Emma. You're listening to Murder or Myth. The true crime podcast where not everything is true. The aim of the game is to find out whether the story is actually a murder or if it's just a myth. Now, let's get started. So, Louise, how are you doing this week? I'm good, Emma. How are you? Great. I'm absolutely slaying the game. I know you are, always. (laughs) Thank you. So, this week's murder story is the football match murder. Football match murder. Okay. Football match murder. This is what I will be telling you today. So, this is the story of 20-year-old Otavio Jorde de Silva. So this story takes place in 2013 in rural Brazil in a place called Pio. So Otavio is home with his father and younger brother Jorge on Sunday morning 30th of June. De Silva was due to play and referee at an amateur football match in a nearby town. Him and his brother took their bikes and set off to the neighbourhood of Centra de Mio. His father seen them leave and didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. So the two lads set off to the football match a few miles away. So there's a small bit of background on the they area. They were walking, was it, sorry? No, they had their bikes. Oh, they were biking, okay. So they drove, a uh, road. Um, so a bit of background on the area. Like, it's a very, um, I suppose, like, kind of poor community, rural. Um, like, the roads the lads would have rode across was red dirt road, kind of just, you know, small huts, houses not many facilities um like a lower economic area in brazil okay and like football was uh, a major activity in most communities there uh, across all age groups kind of everyone could do it you didn't need many facilities for it etc so atavio got to the football field in centro de mayo and begun by playing the match as a defender so at the start of the football match he was actually playing within the teams okay during this time, he got injured and swapped out to play as the referee. So the match rolled on and about 20 minutes into the second half, Atavio made a call that would have everlasting repercussions for many. He gave a free against one of the other men on the team, Josemir Santos Abreu. Abreu was 30 and he knew De Silva from playing alongside him as teammates, opponents, and the two would have been like mutual friends from just playing football in the area. Like, it was very kind of a casual football um, match at the time. Yeah. But, like, it was something that would occur over time and they all would always have known it. And Was this man on his side or the other side when he was originally playing? He would have been on the other side. On the other side, okay. Yeah. But, like, that, like, different days, it was kind of a mixed match, everyone. It's just, like, a fun match. Well, not a fun match, but it's, like, yeah. Yeah, casual league, but, again... Take it seriously. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, after giving a free against Abreu, an argument began, which led to a yellow card warning and then a red card send off, and ultimately a deadly fight. So, Abreu refused to leave the field, and as the fight escalated, he punched a Silva. So, Otavio drew a knife from his shirt pocket and stabbed Abreu twice in retaliation. Abreu died on the way to the hospital, and this was found out by spectators and the footballers and once they learned of a bruised death things immediately took a turn for the worse so the people why did he just casually have a knife in his pocket that's what we'll find out during the story like these football matches especially in lower um kind of poor communities Mm. there was little to no like law enforcement and things get very heated at football matches so people were known yeah but people were known also to be like very competitive. Things got very heated, and referees were kind of known to bring weapons to the matches, just to make sure they were kind of somewhat protected. Okay, in case if they things made a did call. take a wor- thing for turn for the worse, you know so much about the Brazilian communities. <laughs> I do. I I grew up there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Don't know why I said that. <laughs> So, oh yes. So, like, the people that found out about his death were obviously friends and family as they were there as spectators. Mm-hmm. So, group um, that was at the match at the time set after De Silva, learning he killed the man, their friend. It was as they were mostly a bruise, family and friends that were in this group that attacked uh, okay. De Silva. 
So they got Otavio on the pitch and stoned him. He was then tied up and bet with a wooden stick, ran over by a motorbike and stabbed in the throat. Another form of beating he received was being smashed in the face with a bottle of liqueur. And when the group was done the brutal ongoings, De Silva was also decapitated. The local Mm. police didn't believe what he had seen, first stating that he didn't think human beings had the perseverance to do this. So it was like unclear as to where the moment of death occurred. However, it was very brutal and obviously jarring at the time. So medical workers had the gruesome and traumatizing job of documenting the body. The legs were cut off and placed near the body with the right arm and wrist hanging on by skin. The head mm. Yes, this is a bit this is a bit brutal one. The head was placed on a wooden stake on the oh road my gosh. opposite the pitch. Um yeah, so that's the end of the description. <laughs> that's the end of the script. That's quite a abrupt end. Yeah, but it's not the, the end head. of the story. With the... oh, really? there's more. Yeah, no, there's not more bad parts. I don't think. <laughs> so that's the end that you've written. No, there's more. There's more. You said that's the end of the script. The description. Oh, of the body oh, is the sorry, end of the sorry. description. Okay, okay. So the police investigating the crimes believe that, and the few that ganged up on De Silva were fueled by drugs, alcohol, and also the rest of the crowd behind them, like, cheering on the violence, like, cheering on the fact that um, De Silva was getting retribution for his crime of killing Abru in the first place. Okay. In the aftermath of the crimes, one man was arrested, and others were being searched for but by police, and the main suspect that they never got was Abru's brother. So, the two deaths um, in the rural area, area highlighted the culture of, like, the local justice system where law enforcement was severely lacking and there was a sense of kind of honor and like justice yourself like kind of get justice yourself or the locals doing it yeah so only one man got arrested for all the brutality that occurred that day Luisa de Sosa said he assaulted de Silva but denies murdering Luisa. him Luisa Louise de Sosa said he assaulted de Silva but mm. denies murdering him when he got 15 years in jail. A video was captured of the events of Octavio's killing and police examining it, but never arrested or found any other suspects. Both men's family condemned the killings with friends and family painting the other man badly. So like a lot was said on both sides about who was at fault and the fact that one of them had anger issues and the other one wasn't as innocent as he seemed and it later emerged that the bloodshed was nearly avoided as the two men were prepared to leave the field after an older man intervened however de silva then called a brew a clown which he responded by calling octavia's late mother a whore this word exchange cost both men their lives and that is the story of the football match murders okay Good story. A lot of detail in it. Like, about him playing in a certain position. Um, a lot of names. <laughs> there was a lot of you names. You have to give people names, um, honestly. A lot of detail about how, like, the cultural effects of it. But I feel like maybe you would have written that in. So I'm, I'm slightly torn. I think it could be a myth. I'm slightly torn. But... Also, the little bit at the end about calling her mother a whore. I feel like it's a murder. And that's going to be my final guess. But I genuinely could think it could be a myth either. Okay, so you're Um, Because I feel like you like like a lengthy, detailed story either way. Because this has thrown me off before with the fire. fire. Yeah, the fire is right. And that was a similar, like, way of being written. So maybe you've gone for the same approach. I'm going to go with murder. You're going to go with murder? Yeah. It was a murder. It was a murder. Yeah. Yeah, so it was a murder in Brazil. Um, yeah, kind of crazy. Did not know people brought knives to a couple matches. She uh, just threw up an L sign to you guys. That's for you. <laughs> Sorry. Well. That was a good story. <laughs> that was really a good story. That? It was interesting. It was very sad. Oh, very sad. Yeah. yeah. Um... 
Yeah, it was yeah. Quoi's kind of writing it, and I was like, this is too descript. <laughs> should stop writing it. Yeah, it's also interesting, like, sometimes I'm writing a story, I'm like, I feel like I do a lot in America, but also a lot happens in America, so that mm. also kind of threw me off. The fact that it was in Brazil, I was like, that, that leaned me slightly more towards murder, but I'm not sure why. Okay. Maybe just because you were writing about the areas being a little bit poorer and stuff, I feel like yeah. maybe you wouldn't include that if you were writing a myth. But that's maybe so you true. would, because it does add to the story of, like... Yeah, I suppose it's like, not... That's kind of a stereotype, way. I guess, maybe more like... Maybe. Higher crime rates in a... Yeah, or even, like, less um, solved crime. Yeah, yeah, true. Okay, well, thank you for the story. That was good. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, On this week's episode... Yeah. Make sure you to said like my subscribe. line. You said thanks for listening, so I just added. Oh, make sure to no, like and subscribe. I think thank you for listening. No. <laughs> well, thanks to all the listeners for listening. Make sure to like and subscribe. On this week's episode, Louise found out my murder story was in fact a murder. Find us on all streaming platforms. Join us next week for another thrilling adventure. Remember, it's myth until proven murder. Slay, slay. We need to say it together. Slay. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> I have another recording of you being like. This is my line. <laughs> this is too good. <laughs> I never say that. <laughs> no, but... <laughs>